Tepo Mahanuka's contract as the chief executive officer of the Johannesburg Roads Agency has been terminated following suspicions of academic fraud. Now, in November rather of uh, 2022, Mahanuka was placed on administrative leave by the JRA while it looked into the claims internally. Now, the board claims that uh, because Mahanuka failed to refute the allegations leveled against him, it made the decision. Uh, to cancel the contract. Wahai well, Tudumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwano. Welcome to tonight's episode of Soweto Today. It is good to have you with us. Now, in studio with us tonight is Tepo Mahanuke himself, uh, the former CEO of GRA. He's joining us. Just to clarify a few things there, um, I think maybe let me put it to set the record straight. Thanks very much, Tepo, for making the time. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated. I mean, I know you've heard this question um, quite a lot on the interviews that you did. I think before we can start, uh, let's rather um, start the conversation by, you know, looking at uh, the qualifications that you have. Yes. First, and then, I mean, that are in your name. I mean, I mean I've heard you talking about all these kind of, um, you know, um, uh, uh, qualifications that you've obtained and stuff. Maybe you can just explain them to our viewers at home. What is it that you have and from which institution? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that has been a very common question that I've received and I don't mind repeating it over and yeah. over again. I mean, after all, it's my qualification. Yeah. And so I hold a national diploma in mechanical engineering. Um, I hold a bachelor of technology in operations management from Val University of Technology. I've completed the director development programs um, from Institute of Directors South Africa. I've done numerous um, courses with the University of Free State, University of Pretoria, um, and Northwest University. That's the likes of your contract management, um, public finance management, um, project management. It's quite a, a long list. Yeah. I mean, um, and also the one that has been mostly quoted a lot. It is the Mazda Competitive Intelligence, CIP1, that has been often mistaken and misunderstood for Mazda's in competitive intelligence. Um, that is, of course, by, um, by the Fallard Academy, um, which is an institution in the United States of America in Boston, Massachusetts, um, which is situated um, where Harvard Business School is at. And I've, I've had allegations that I've said that I've I've enrolled with Harvard and... Because I was there. about to get into that question. I mean, like, um, uh, you never admitted that, uh, you know, um, you, you were in Harvard for uh, competitive intelligence, uh, that qualification, when you clarified, uh, uh, you know, when they said you hold masters, since you said that it's just master. But what's the issue with this Harvard thing? Uh, maybe you can just explain it to us. Look. When there's a particular propaganda set to achieve a particular objective, of course people will extrapolate what they seem not to understand to what they will want to deem to qualify it to. Um, never have I said that I've got a master's and again never have I said that I've been um, a Harvard st um, student or I've been um, involved in any Harvard related academics. Um, you, would, you would actually look into my CV that I used to apply for the position at the Johannesburg Roads Agency. It had clearly stipulated what my qualifications are, where they obtained, what are the short courses, and what are the honorary and awards. Of course, I have a number of awards. I've got a number of honorary um, 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 certificates. And now when they take that and want to qualify it to what will best seem to qualify or rather to fit their propaganda, they would therefore want to say that I have masters um, from, from Harvard. And I wouldn't be surprised because what had qualified that or what seemingly had been one of the most um, flying news, it has been that of which I know not where the CV comes from. When I looked into the allegations that were being brought before me and the charges that they said that I need to respond to, they are not emanating from the CV that I used to apply. There's a particular doctored CV mm -hmm. that does not have even my full details, that even GRA is using that doctored CV um, to want me to, to respond to it. They base their charges from that doctored CV, not on the CV that is within their system. 
So what you're saying is that the CV that you're referring to, the one that Daily Maverick, um, News 24, I think, and EWN, uh, they've been yes. quoting, um, it's not the CV that you actually submitted to Johannesburg Roads Agency? Absolutely not. It's not the CV that I've submitted to Johannesburg Roads Agency. And to my surprise, I mean, I mean, if you're talking your Daily Maverick, News 24, and EWN, I was, uh, to my understanding, those are the big... Um, those, those are the big publishers. But now if they're publishing unverified information in a language that of which they deem to be the full um, um, language that they've done for research, it's quite very amazing. Because that CV, it's not my CV, they have never went to JRA and asked for the CV. Because when you apply for a job, you apply via an email. Yeah. So the system of the JRA has the original CV. So my understanding is that they could have gone and asked for the original CV, but because of those three media houses that are busy destroying um, young black executives, they were up to one propaganda. And even now, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't write anything out of everything that has been on the news, out of everything that has been there, because it does not meet their main propaganda. They've got one agenda, and the agenda is to destroy this particular individual which is in this case the CEO of GRA. And if anything comes out that does not fit the propaganda, they won't write. I'm not saying they should write any good or bad. Yeah. But I'm saying news ought to be independent. News ought to be verified. And it has to be information that has been well researched. Not writing for the sake of whatsoever that you have got because you want to sell. So the CVs that were there, that they have been created, they are not my CVs. They never went to GRA to obtain the original CV. Even today, the original CV should be on the system of the GRA. What they have been making allegation on is information that has been validated by the GRA. Come on, think of it this way. What is it that I could have done that had made them to want to remove me within three months of appointment after having verified because first, you cannot be appointed without being verified. Yeah. So they authenticated the qualifications. I operated month one, they were fine. Month two, they were fine. What triggered the real authentication of qualification? I, I, I want us to park it there. You know, I also want to know when you were given an opportunity to refute the allegations. Um, why didn't you come forward? But I'm going to let you, um, you know, we're going to go for a quick ad break. When we come back, please just uh, answer that for us. The former CEO was entrusted with uh, making proactive repairs and maintenance, as well as uh, sizable investments in extending the city's road-related infrastructure network to accommodate the ever-growing city of Johannesburg so that the city's road network is fit uh, for purpose. Let us take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still tuning in to Soweto Today with myself, Tabo Molokwane. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you're just tuning in, we are joined by the former JRA CEO, Tepa Mahanuke, who has been recently axed as JRA CEO after, you know, allegedly faking qualifications. He's here joining us in studio just to, you know, give us an understanding of exactly what is the situation. Tepa, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, we were talking before the, uh, we went to the ad break you were given an opportunity to respond to these allegations, but you did not uh, respond. Why was that? All right. <clears throat> Let me take you through before the opportunity so that you've got a better background of what might have been the reason why I did not respond. Yeah. So I was um, spa uh, placed on special leave in November um, after, after an inquiry from Daily Maverick, not after an investigation. Yeah. Inquiry, respond to the questions to board was asked to respond. Then the board said, mm -mm. suspension. Okay, fine. I went on a special leave, then I later got an upgrade uh, after being upgraded to a suspension wherein charges were brought before me. Um, there were four charges that were brought um, to me. Fine. I was subjected to a disciplinary hearing. Of course, it's expected for an employer to subject the employees to a disciplinary hearing. So I went on wanting to see what is this uh, charges, what is the definition of these charges. Went on to the disciplinary hearing. And I therefore asked, which policy are they going to use to discipline me? Um, which regulation? 
and they could not provide me with the policy. I submitted a court interdict to say, you cannot subject me to a disciplinary hearing unless you give me the policy in which you're going to use in order for you to discipline me. Um, upon which they now submitted the policy that they're going to use, which is the regulation. Fine, then I've realized on the regulation that there's no resolutions. The, 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 the shareholder, which is the city, did not give consent for them to even suspend me in the first place. So this was the agenda of the board. You know, all right, fine. Then I allowed the, the, the disciplinary hearing to go forward. Going forward with the disciplinary hearing, um, the report was presented. When the report was presented and the investigation was being led, um, we have learned a number of things. One, the contents of the report, most of them were actually information gathered from the internet, never from the actual institution. So the investigator would just go on Google and type there mm -hmm. and get whatever that they get and, and write. So there was a lot of unverified information within the report itself. And as they were busy going through and leading the evidence that was found on the report, then the GRA board saw that, no, 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 here we are not going to win. Um, they immediately cancelled the, the, the DC. When they cancelled the DC, then they wrote to me to say that, please note that we've cancelled the DC with immediate effect, which was a shock for me, because the DC is a process that's supposed to remedial the, the situation. They cancelled that with immediate effect. From cancelling it with immediate effect, um, then they said to me, I must respond to the charges that of which I've pleaded not guilty on the DC. Mm. And I responded to them, say, how do I therefore plead not guilty, uh, plead, uh, sorry, how do I therefore respond to that of which I've pleaded not guilty to? Yeah. I have no reason to respond to this. I don't know this. This is fallacious information. This is information that is being on the media, which is not true. So, so I want to know, do you think that, uh, you know, well, there was some sort of an interference, particularly from the board, you know, um, in terms of your work, hence, you know, proper procedures were not followed, as you're saying, in terms of, you know, trying to get rid of you from JRA? I, I, I don't think, I know that there's been an interference from the board, because why then would you subject me to a disciplinary process which is ought to be independent, chaired by an independent chairperson, then you later come and cancel it? Do you imagine the cost that I've expensed to, pro, um, to, to, to acquire senior counsel and lawyers to deal with that? But anyway, that's not the case. They cancelled it. After having cancelled it, they said I must respond. I responded to say, what you are doing is unlawful. Take me back to the DC. Deal with me on the basis of the process. This process that you're coming with is not part and parcel of what the law is supposed, or of how the law operates. Then they said to me, um, dismissed terminated my contract, and then I must appeal. Before I even appeal, then they say that I failed to appeal within time. They even had plucked that three houses, Daily Maverick, <laughs> News 24, and, and EWN. They started writing to say that I failed to respond to the allegations. Even what you just said now, when we're open, say fake qualifications. That's the, the nature in which yeah. they operate. There is no fake qualifications. All qualifications were verified by them again they were re-authenticated so there's no fake qualifications there now i've been dismissed out of the process out of dis disciplinary process of course now that takes us to a point where we are saying which jurisdiction does this fall into are we now going to labor court for unlawfulness are we speaking of unfairness and it's a matter of um, the, 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 the bargaining council or the system. I, I want to, we will get into the issue of the labor court and stuff, but I wanted to also just to touch on the issue. I mean, throughout the time that you had, I mean, you said just roughly three months as a, a CEO there. Um, you know, what were some of your, you know, achievements as, um, as, as, as a CEO? I mean, what was the plan? For Joburg. I mean, we know it's been riddled by potholes, you know, dilapidating infrastructure and stuff. What was your ultimate plan for Johannesburg? Okay, good. I thought that question would never come. I mean, that's the question I wanted to report <laughs> 90 days from office. One, this, the surface of our road has reached its lifespan. I've been preaching that. So the GRA has an asphalt plant, an asphalt plant that has the capacity and the capability to resurface all the roads. All right, at the right time and at the right speed. 
what I have been able to do was to make that asphalt plant to be fully operational and removing all the irregularities that were said to be on the plant. So we're ready to resurface, not patching potholes. Well, how long are we going to patch potholes? Yeah. Now, as it had rained, you might have seen there's new potholes and new potholes because of the, 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 the surface road is like braid. It keeps getting rotten from here to here. I have been able to achieve within three months an ability to resurface the roads. That's not good for, for, for those that want to maintain their city to become unstable. Mm -hmm. Now, not only that, we have been able to remove the barriers between um, the maintenance and the refurbishment of bridges in different areas, in different areas within the city. If you can look into our cities, now if you drive into, the, in, in, into, into our roads, well, not our roads, uh, I'm now asked. If you drive into the Jobek roads, <laughs> you would see in between the, that there's not even just grass, they now became trees. And there's yeah. now arguments of saying, who's supposed to clean here? You know, who's supposed to clean this thing? Who's supposed to cut these things? Those are the things that goes and pile up and block the storm water. Now, cars get into a lot of flooding. So within my operations, I had set up a proper system where, whereby we're now getting to be properly in position to solve those issues. Fixing of our depots. If you can look into the depots um, within all the regions, you would realize that the depots are dilapidated. How do you expect a broken tool to fix something else? Now, we've been working very well in making sure that we, refurb we refurbish the depots such that we can be able to fix in, uh, the surfaces of, of, of our city. So that is what I've managed to, to pull through. Of course, with sizable numbers, without having forgetting to making sure that we've met all the targets on the quarters in which I reported on and I was accountable for, we made sure that we, we achieve all the objectives that were set um, for me as a CEO. Um, Tebo, we will continue. I think you'll expand on that uh, uh, after the ad break. Let's park it here. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show and we've been talking about the former CEO of JRA, Tepo Mahanuke, about his dismissal after, you know, what uh, they've been saying that he was unable to produce proof to refute the claims that uh, he provided uh, false uh, academic qualifications. He's still here with us uh, just to expand more on what we've been talking about. I mean, Sabah, you were touching on the issue of your plan. I mean, you've reached the target. It was 90 days. You were supposed to give a report, obviously, uh, since being in office. Maybe you can expand on that uh, before we just uh, continue. All right. So look, looking into what was supposed to happen, we were in good position to make sure that the city roads get to become in a better space. If you can look into Soweto, most of the road stormwater channels are not functional. Some are looking more like dummies, if not dummies. Mm -hmm. And we're looking into making sure that that is actually being moved away and we get to have a proper stormwater. And that requires a lot of planning. So we have done a lot of planning within that three months. What was left of us was to execute in establishing working um, stormwater channels and making sure that we resurface most of the roads. We don't believe in, my, 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 my approach had never been believing in filling in uh, potholes, but have been believing in resurfacing so that we've got a longer time span on our surfaces. And that's what we, we had in plan. Mm. I mean, I know that uh, you've approached uh, the Labour Court. Obviously, you won't dwell into the merits of, um, uh, of what is expected or what's been going on in terms of uh, the case itself. Maybe you can touch on it a bit. Uh, what is it that you're expecting to achieve there? Look, we have approached the Labour Court in terms of the interdict, interdicting the Johannesburg Growth Agency from filling the position until they're done with my matter, because their propaganda was to get rid of me to put whoever that they want to put. But the reason for that was that we have I've picked up that the person who's currently acting at GRA um, does not even have a degree, but claims to have a master's in business administration. And that got me a little bit worried in terms of their credibility. And in that, I said, no, no, we are not going to compromise the, the roads. Yeah. We are going to interdict that. They need to stop, finish here, then that's when they can move forward. Um, 
Of course, the Labour Court it came in to say that is not within their jurisdiction to adjudicate the application of the urgent interdict. Um, we need to refer the interdict to the relevant um, forum, yeah. and of which we have done that now. We are awaiting. Um, there will be a sitting, I think, on the 24th, um, set to, to deal with, with the matter. Mm. Um, I, I know maybe you've heard this question before. Do you want your job back? Truth is, um, do I want my job back? Yes, I want my job back. Why do I want my job back? Because I have invested passion into the, in, in, into the employment itself. So I was not employed out of being on the streets. I've been a CEO. And when I've resigned and I had to take a decision to say I want to make the city to be a better city. And in that, being uprooted in the manner in which I've been uprooted, if I'm not taking my job back, then I'm not doing justice to the residents of um, Johannesburg. Mm. So yes, I want my job back. Mm. Before we wrap up um, the conversation, um, here's a platform now. Um, you know, I want you to assure the public, you know, on your stance about this whole issue. It's an opportunity for you to just say, look, here am I, Tepo Mahanuk, your CEO. This is what's been going on, and this, this is where we are going, and this is where I want to take the city. I'm not sure which camera we're going to use, but <laughs> but you can just speak to the people. All right, this sounds more like a political manifesto. I'm an official. <laughs> um, what's very um, significant is that everything that one um, says is informed by the business plan of the city. We align the objectives to the priorities of the current sitting mayor and to the priorities of the city. So it's not as quick as to say this is what Tsepo Mahanuk is going to do, then it becomes a political manifesto. Mm -hmm. But however, the resurfacing of the roads goes without a question. That's, that's one. Jowek City needs all that 14,000 road network needs to be resurfaced so that we can eliminate um, this whole feeling of potholes. The corruption within the supply chain and the corruption within the Johannesburg Roads Agency cannot just go on and on as though there's no accounting officer to account on that. And accounting officers cannot be subjected under political um, mandate or under political mantling. As Tepo Mahanuk, I stand to say that the resurfacing of the Jobek roads, the refurbishment of the bridges, the working of the traffic signals, they will be functional in the way in which they are designed to be functional. And there will be no unnecessary interruption from human um, 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 interference. If anything had to go wrong, it will be going wrong out of its own nature, not because of somebody else had been interfered. There will be employment of skilled people who are going to make sure that the roads of Jobek can never be the same again. Tepo, thanks very much. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I've seen you quite a lot that you actually enjoy the camera, so I wanted you to just... <laughs> Please, this, you know, just say it straight, you know. Uh, but thank you very much for coming through. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to see how this thing develops, particularly as you're saying that it's going to be sitting on the 24th, just to understand exactly where we're going as uh, Johannesburg, as the city of Johannesburg as a whole. But thank you very much for making the time. Thank you. I'm not enjoying the cameras. I'm clearing my name and setting the record clear. Thank you. Definitely. <laughs> that was uh, the ex CEO of the Johannesburg Roads Agency, Tepo Mahanuki, giving us his opinions on, uh, you know, his dismissal after failing, um, you know, to refute allegations that he actually uh, falsified his qualifications to score the job, uh, you know, there at uh, Johannesburg Roads Agency. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. You can simply just uh, give us a call or just uh, WhatsApp us on 081-531-8857. Bye to Yarenate Mare Khatile from myself and the rest of the team. Good night and thank you for watching.